In this video, I'm going to give you five reasons why I think Firebase was more appropriate for our needs, and I'm gonna give you three considerations to help you determine whether or not it's right for you. My name is Ben, I'm an app developer, the CTO of an ed tech company called Mastery Portfolio, and I do a few projects on this side. I use Firebase for most of my work, and I'm really excited about it. In this video, I wanna focus on reasons and not get too hung up on what Firebase is, but in a very brief summary, I would say that Firebase is Google's backend as a service. It is a web app and mobile app platform, and it offers an extensive variety of backend solutions, tools, and integrations for web developers of all sorts. Currently, most of my focus is on a web app that we're building called the Mastery Book. As far as its dependency on Firebase is concerned, I use authentication, cloud firestore, hosting, storage, and what did I forget? Cloud functions, did I say the cloud functions? Oh yeah, and analytics, which I use very minimally now, but I will be using it a lot more in the near future. So I use like five, six tools, and as you can see on the website, they have a whole lot more, but at least I have enough hands-on experience to give you a taste of what it has to offer. So let's get into the reasoning, shall we? Number one, it's free to start, and it's actually very inexpensive to keep it going, even on the Blaze plan. Now, there is a caveat about this, which I will describe a little bit in reason number four, actually, and I've even made a video about, but uh, basically, I have been using it for a while, like over a year, gosh, almost two years now, and uh, we are talking about still pennies of usage, even though we have plenty of users now. <laughs> It's because the free tier is so generous, really, if you know how to use it correctly. And for being free, it's also really easy to set up. In fact, I've already made a video about how to set up a Firebase app in nine steps. Uh, you can check that out over here. And of course, I'll also put a link in the description. Reason number two, it is an incredibly simple solution for a small team that needs to get an app up and running. We are a startup. We have three founders and one hire. When we started, we wanted to get up and running and Firebase was a solution that allowed us to do that. That in fact leads me into reason number three, which is that it takes care of every backend solution that you can think of and ones that you haven't even thought of yet. Probably the best example of this, in my opinion, is authentication because from where I stand, it feels like I haven't done anything at all. Yes, I have written rule sets for how to access my database, but in terms of actually logging in and handling tokens and third-party authentication, all of that is handled so easily. Just take a look at the code that handles Google login. Even Facebook login, this example here, is so remarkably simple. It is set it and forget it kind of behavior in terms of authentication. And the documentation as well as the YouTube videos that are officially endorsed by Google have been fantastic help. Reason number four is the cloud Firestore database structure. I'm a really big fan of this, but it's the most distinct feature about Firebase and the primary means of handling billing. The database is structured like files in directories where every directory can contain subdirectories inside of them, which can also contain additional files and more subdirectories. You get charged according to the number of files that you open. The correct terminology, by the way, used by Firebase for directory is a collection. So you can have collections and subcollections. And for a file, uh, they call them docs. So you get charged according to your doc reads and your doc writes, and as well as deletions and storage. If you're accustomed to thinking of a database structured like a table with rows and columns, then you might be charged for the amount of time spent accessing that data, whereas Firebase is distinct number of reads. What makes this so interesting to me and why I really like it is if you understand how your app is going to be used by your users, then you can optimize how many files they access. I realize I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself for the content of this video. The point is there is a Firebase way of doing things. When done poorly or done lazily, it can actually drive up costs and reduce your app's performance. But I like to think of it as when you do it well, you can improve your performance and reduce costs. Anyway, if you're looking for more information about how to think like this and do things in the Firebase way, check out the Cloud Firestore uh, video series on YouTube. That helped me out a lot and 
they're really well done and entertaining too. Reason number five is cloud functions and analytics. Basically the two services that I use for server side functions concerning how users use the app, that's analytics. Uh, in using analytics, I'm able to define custom events and when those events are triggered, I can collect data. And then cloud functions, which as you might imagine, are any functions that are complex enough that I might want them to be performed by the server, but it also includes uh, special triggers like on write functions or on delete functions. Basically anytime any type of action is performed on the server, you can write a cloud function that will handle any task that you want, such as sending an email whenever a new account gets created or anytime a specific doc gets edited, updating another doc to reflect the changes. And so much of this is already built in that it just makes coding it so simple. So those are the five reasons that I have that make me really like using Firebase. But like I said in the beginning, I also wanted to give you three considerations for why you might not want to use Firebase. So first of all, obviously all of my data is being hosted by Google. Now, of course, that can be a great thing, right? Google's a big company. They have engineers who really know what they're doing. They've got servers all over the world. Like, I feel like my data is safe with Google, but at the same time, it's in the hands of somebody else. Now, for a small startup that's getting started, that's awesome. That allows you to do your more important work. But there are arguments for building your own backend and hosting it on your own machine or in-house. So number two is kind of tied into my reason number four in favor of Firebase, which is that Cloud Firestore really changes the way you have to think. And that might not be appealing or it might not even be optimal for the kind of app that you need to use. If that's something that's of interest to you, again, I highly recommend the video series on YouTube to get an idea of what the non-relational database structure is like, and that might give you a stronger idea of how your database would have to be structured to make an excellent use of Firebase's features. And then finally, consideration number three is it locks you in. I've been doing things the Firebase way, right? If I ever wanted to change this and use a different backend, I know exactly how I would migrate. I would rewrite my entire app. That That's a little uncomfortable, right? Like. I am now basically going to be a Firebase customer for as long as my app exists. And that is a price that I was willing to pay when I decided to sign up. It was really easy to sign up and you can say that that's how they get you, right? But take those considerations into mind. It has been an excellent experience. Again, documentation, videos, ease of use, fantastic experience for me. I hope that it is a similar fantastic experience for you should you give it a shot. But if you like this video, give the thumbs up a shot. No, uh, I make videos every week about innovation and about my own work, which is as a software developer. So if that's up your alley, go ahead and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. I give you my heart.